Coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society, we kick off Mario vs. Donkey Kong Month by asking, hey, what the heck is Mario vs. Donkey Kong? It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I am joined, as I'm always joined, by my co-host in a barrel that I got to break him out of, Mark Mitchell. Mark, how's it going? Oh, it's going great. Feels good to be out of that barrel. Uh, here's the thing. I'm going to try out a new uh, Donkey Kong, Mario vs. Donkey Kong uh, catchphrase for, for the month, because it's Mario vs. Donkey Kong month. So I'm going to do, from Mario 64, Oh, banana. <laughs> That's going to be my catchphrase for the month. I think that's really... And you you mean also outside of the show, like in life. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to like... Uh, when I call my mother on the, on the weekend, I'll be oh, banana. Yeah, I think this is a really good plan. Yeah, I, I think it'll... I was going to say I think it'll work. But, but you know it'll work. I know it'll work. You think it'll it's improve your in life. this room right here. Uh, I noticed you're not offering like a catchphrase that you're going to have. Yeah, no, I, I'm struggling to think of what... If Diddy Kong has a catchphrase, I will tell you this. Mm. I guarantee that more than one time this month, I am going to take off my baseball cap, throw it on the ground, and stomp on it when I'm upset. Well, okay, but that's normal for you. I know, but th- but this you month, do, I'll do be that? doing it with, yeah. You do that, and then you also do the thing where you uh, flip the hat backwards, put on sunglasses, and take out a boombox. Yeah, I'm a real stinker when it comes down to it. Yeah, and then I'm shredding on an electric guitar. <laughs> I mean, we're pretty cool. Waving my big ponytail around. <laughs> Uh, Mark, look, we don't do a weather report anymore, but can we do a pre-weather report? Look, I'm nervous. It's going to rain. For LA. I'm gonna, nervous for LA. It's going to rain a lot in LA, and it feels wet out there already. It's not raining, but like I can tell. I feel like whenever we talk about LA weather, especially yes. in winter, um, people... I. I would guess that people don't enjoy it. You are projecting <laughs> because we have s- listeners in Los Angeles. We do, but we also have listeners in places where like the weather's way worse all the time. Sure. Yes. Yes. I mean, true. This, this is why we discontinued the weather report. <laughs> I just want you to know that we've got some weather coming up and I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Say the, say the phrase. What, uh, oh, uh, oh, banana. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> And you're really not even going to register a single catchphrase? <laughs> I, I can't think You of, could do a Mario one. Did, oh, I could. Because it's Mario versus Donkey Kong. No, we, do, we seemingly chose a side at the beginning of this month. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Mario doesn't need more boosters, right? That's like, true. Donkey Kong really needs the support here. Yeah. Uh, speaking of support, maybe Nintendo Cartridge Society needs your support. If you go to patreon.com slash Nintendo Cartridge Society, you can check out our Patreon where we, if you are... Uh, giving at the 8-bit or 16-bit levels you get access to our once-a-month episodes of miniseries that we are putting out. We just put out our first episode of NCS Arcade, where we are playing games on Nintendo Switch Online, Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack that we've... Ugh, God, ran out of air. That was that pretty good. That was, you made it a long time, <laughs> I though. did make it a long time, and then I crashed and burned. Games that we've never beaten before, and the first episode that went out is The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap, uh, and we had a great time talking about it, so you can check that out now. Yeah, and uh, next month, we're going to be talking about Jet Force Gemini. It's an announcement. Yes, uh, we had not previously announced uh, Jet Force Gemini, uh, also available on the Nintendo Switch Online, plus expansion pack. Um, And uh, Mark, not only have I never beaten this game, I've never played it at all. No, and I am just based on the box art. Kind of dreading it. Yeah, I mean, you have uh, been sort of notorious for saying that various Nintendo 64 games, as you're playing them now, look like but. Look like but. uh, And I think this is going to be no different. (laughs) I think this could be one of them, yeah. Um, But so if you would like to, uh, you know, play along with us, uh, you certainly should. Um, Mark, I know I'm going to be using my Nintendo 64 controller for the um, uh, Nintendo Switch Online. uh, And I'm so glad that I have that because. Playing those games without that controller doesn't make any kind of sense. Yeah, when I was playing GoldenEye last yeah. November when that was released, it took 
a while to wrap my head around the controls in handheld mode yeah using joy-con and i never really got a good grasp for it so yeah i think i mean honestly since i've got the oled a little over a year ago i've been playing like 90 percent of the time in handheld mode but I think you're right. I think for this, I'm going to have to dock it you and play it, yeah. with the, the Nintendo 64 controller. Or you could do tabletop mode. Don't forget about tabletop yeah, mode. Yeah, that's right. Poor neglected tabletop mode. Yeah, uh, it's poor one out for tabletop mode. Uh, okay, um, what? where are we? In Discord. The... Discord. If you would like to join our Discord, which is a community of people who are talking about Nintendo stuff all the time, uh, all you got to do is email us, Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com, gmail.com, and I will send you an invitation. Or if you sign up for the uh, Patreon, you automatically get... Uh, an invitation, I, I believe. You can link. Yeah, I don't. I actually don't know how that works. I know you can I put your Discord information. Yeah, maybe you yeah, are I think, automatically I think you just do because there, there, there are there are people who've shown up in the Discord that I'm like, where did this person come from? And then I'm like, oh, it's because of the Patreon. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it it, it does happen. Um, uh, and it's a fun place to talk about Nintendo and this show. All you want. Um, and then one last plug. Uh, February twenty first. We are in the month of February right now. Uh, so like less than three weeks the first issue of the teenage mutant ninja turtle source book comes out and that is notable because i wrote it um so if you are interested in learning about uh the idw run of teenage mutant ninja turtles the first issue of the sort of encyclopedia uh is out in just a couple weeks you can order that at uh your local comic book store all right uh mark let's uh let's run down the series mario versus donkey kong kind of a niche series right not uh, by by no stretch of the imagination is it a short series there's like uh 10 or 11 uh, entries in in what we are uh sort of referring to as the greater mario versus donkey kong franchise um but i think just like a uh, broad overview what is your like general experience with the the series so I feel like we should define, before we even get into that. I love it. I feel like we should define what we mean I by- I asked to co- set the table, and you're like, no, first we need to set the table. <laughs> <laughs> Let's build the table. Let's build the table. Well, yes. I, I just mean- No, you're right. Like, because we're including games in here that they are not part of the named Mario versus Donkey Kong franchise. Right. So we are, so uh, yes, we, we for the purposes of our conversation here, we are starting with- Donkey Kong, uh, the original like arcade Donkey Kong 1981, um, and Donkey Kong Jr., which are like obvious precursors to the Donkey Kong 94 that comes out on Game Boy, um, and then that sort of leads directly into the proper Mario versus Donkey Kong, which then sort of spins off into all these minis games. Yeah, and so because I feel like these, the original Donkey Kong game, Donkey Kong Jr. Uh, Donkey Kong 94 on the Game Boy, and, the, and then the named Mario versus Donkey Kong series yes. are all unique in the fact that they are, like, pitting Mario and Donkey Kong against each other as antagonists for the other. Y- yes. Because there are other games where yes. they show up uh, together but they're not necessarily rivals or right. You know, well, and, and in every enemies. single, every single one of these games, uh, there are some of them where you play as characters beyond Mario, but you're always taking the Mario side, right? Like there's, they have yet to do a Donkey Kong versus Mario, right? I guess is what I'm saying. It's always Mario versus Donkey Kong. Um, and it's just interesting that even in like the original uh, Donkey Kong, I guess Donkey Kong Jr. Donkey is, Kong is, is Jr. The one I think is the exception yeah. uh, where you play as Donkey Kong Jr. Whoever that is, <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> Uh, uh, against Mario, but the, yeah, that's the only example. Otherwise, you're always Mario twi- trying to thwart uh, Donkey Kong. And there are other examples of games that exist in the Nintendo verse where you can pit Mario and Donkey Kong against each other, like Smash Brothers or Mario Party or something right, like that. But right. we are we're not counting those. We're not counting those. Really, it's got to have uh, both Mario and Donkey Kong's names in the titles, with the exception of. Uh, the original Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., and Donkey Kong 94. Everything else, well, actually, that's not even true either. But uh, <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get to it as, as, as we run through it. But, uh, you know, so, sort of using the, the fulcrum and, like, pivot point of Mario versus Donkey Kong on the Game Boy Advance uh, as this sort of, like, uh, pivot point from controlling Mario to controlling the minis, um, that's the greater series that we're talking about here. Yeah, and so, like, specifically, there's actually... 
a, I would say Donkey Kong is a Nintendo franchise that there's a lot of games in there that I have not played or I haven't played very much of. Well, and I, I feel like Donkey Kong as a franchise uh, it, like suffers a, a little bit of an identity crisis because the first two games and the Game Boy game um, are so clearly one kind of thing, right? Um, that then like the Mario versus Donkey Kong series kind of takes over. But like Donkey Kong in general is so many other things. It's the country games. It's like those uh, like... Um, you know, jungle climbing, uh, what, whatever they're king of swing, uh, like those, those games, it's, uh, the, it just, it's just a lot of weird different things, um, that, uh, doesn't feel like they really know what they want that series to be. Yeah. I feel, I feel like that's right. Like they've never, so Mario is an everyman and can do anything, right? Mario shows <laughs> yes. up in DDR Mm -hmm. And you're like, yes, this makes sense. I yeah. love it. He's a doctor, and you're like, yes, yeah, I understand this makes, that. This makes sense. He should but, go to jail for over prescribing mega vitamins, but sure. <laughs> but Don but Donkey Kong, just to kind of like reinforce what you're saying, is not that way. It's an iconic Nintendo in its own way. Yes. Donkey Kong is like Star Fox, where the <laughs> Nintendo doesn't really know it's an analogy for no one, but yeah, keep going. <laughs> Donkey <laughs> Nintendo, do, they just haven't found something yes. that sticks. Like the um, Donkey Kong Country was enormously successful, and then I think each of those games sold less and less. And then Returns was uh, sold really well. Tropical Freeze has done fine mm -hmm. in its two releases, but not well enough that they wanted to continue like just churning out more. You know, like with Mario, yes, I guess what yeah. I'm saying is with Mario, you, there's always another Mario game. Yeah, you just down. expect yeah. that, well, someday we're going to get another 2D Mario game, right? Someday we're going to get another 3D Mario game. Yeah, was it a long time from New Super Mario Brothers U to Super Mario Brothers Wonder? Yes, but at no point were we like, yeah, maybe they're just done. Maybe that's just it. But yeah, with Donkey exactly. Kong, you're like, actually, yeah, maybe, maybe <laughs> that might just be, be done. They might just yeah. be done until they will try something new with them. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, and and I and it's it's that's also true of the like um, Donkey Kong arcade style game too, where it's just like I don't know, it's it's such a it's such a it occupies such a strange space in uh, Nintendo's lineup, uh, and I'm just over here being like, we we got, we got Joy Cons, we could do like bongo work uh, with our Joy Cons. Where's Donkey Kong a four? <laughs> there was a three that was only released in Japan. <laughs> was never released here. Where's the Donkey Konga collection? Donkey Konga trilogy. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Got to it. Got to something I actually wanted. Um, but so, okay. Uh, what What is your... Sh I mean, should we talk about our experience with um, this sort of mini franchise uh, in general? Or should we kind of do that as we hit each game? Almost feels like maybe we should talk about it as we hit each game. Yeah, right? let's go ahead and do that. Um, so just sort of... And so what, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to sort of uh, chart the course of Nintendo's path through the Mario versus Donkey Kong series. Um, and there's a nice little symmetry here of uh, the Donkey Kong arcade game coming out in 1981 at sort of the beginning of, you know, Nintendo's ar arcade uh, experience. Uh, and then the most recent uh, Mario versus Donkey Kong, which isn't even out yet, um, uh, that that's sort of like from the mostly beginning to uh, past the present um, or beyond the present, I guess. Um, so we're, we're going to get a full look at uh, Nintendo's whole thing through the course of this episode, just talking about Mario versus Donkey Kong. So let's start with Donkey Kong. 1981 in arcades, the Game & Watch version of it comes out in 1982. It is one of three uh, release day games for the Famicom in 1983. Mark, do you know what those three games are? No. So they're Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong Jr. and Popeye. Oh. Those are the three games that the Famicom launches with in Japan. Um, uh, it obviously, uh, both it and Donkey Kong Jr. come out on the uh, NES in uh, 1986 um, when it launches basically in, in the States. Um, uh, and Donkey Kong uh, is a, a phenomenon when it comes out, right? Is massively successful in, in arcades and then also finds uh, like a home being ported to every home console, right? Right, like official ports. And yes. like Coleco and Atari. I actually think the first time I played Donkey Kong or saw Donkey Kong being played 
was when I was at a friend's house when I was really young, and they had the Atari version of it. Yeah. I mean, and all of these versions, even the NES version, although less so, uh, but the rest of these versions are, like, notoriously bad. Um, but the the Coleco, uh, vis- uh, Coleco uh, version that was a pack-in for the Coleco Vision, it wasn't even a separate cart. It was just on the machine itself. Um was uh like reportedly uh de- like developed or ported in uh, like three weeks um under like terrible crunch conditions was missing two of the four levels um uh and was just like by all accounts a really bad version of the game but it, when it came out uh, on the Coleco Vision like that version of it uh quadrupled Coleco's profits for the next year so like it was a jug in in a way that like nothing else was at the time donkey kong was a juggernaut i was um listening to i think so jeremy parish the like video game historian mm-hmm. has a youtube channel where he does these like works series like nes, NES works. works yeah um great series and he did the i think it was called the sg100 which was uh a like sega's first home console in japan before the master system. Yeah. And in the kind of like wrap up video that he did at the end of that series, after you talked about every SG 100 game, he was talking about kind of like the differences between uh, Sega and Nintendo. And one of the things he talks about that's uh, germane to this conversation is that the, any, the Famicom was basically designed pretty similar to how like the Nintendo 64 was designed for Mario 64. Yes. That the Famicom, like its technical specs and all of that, were d- was designed to create as faithful a port as possible. Yes. On a home console. Of Donkey Kong. Yes. Yeah. Of Donkey Kong. And right. so, like, that's how foundational Donkey Kong is to Nintendo. That being said, I haven't played this game that much. Like, it, like, yeah. this was not like a big, this is, Donkey Kong itself has not been like a big part of my life. Um, Donkey Kong's a decent sized part of my life. Um, uh, the 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 original Donkey Kong, but I mean, kind of mostly the NES version, which is missing the second level. Um, uh, you know, the the game cycles through four levels over and over again. Um, and that second level, the Cement Factory, is uh famously missing from from the NES port. Uh, so when I play the arcade version now, I'm always thrown by the and it's an easy it's like maybe the easiest of of the four maps um but uh i'm al- i'm always kind of like thrown off by its its presence uh but yeah i mean like every time uh donkey kong arcade has been available for me to purchase on a nintendo platform i do it um and i i really enjoy the original donkey kong i like a lot it's um uh sort of the space that it occupies as a like competitive uh arcade game uh, that the I mean, there's the that documentary King of Kong, um, that uh, you know features uh, Billy Mitchell, no relation to Mark, um, uh, possibly uh, setting these world records, but also maybe being a cheater. We don't know. Um, uh, and uh, like it, it, it is just one of the. Not only is it foundational for how the NES uh, was built, but it's sort of foundational for the early days of like the scene of Nintendo. Right, like there is no such thing as like a Nintendo World Championships and therefore like no such thing as a Splatoon Invitational if there's no competitive scene around Donkey Kong. It all starts there. Yeah. Yeah. Um and so like uh uh Donkey Kong Jr. I, I feel like it's it's hard to have the conversation about Donkey Kong without Donkey Kong Jr. The game comes out in the the next year um and then like it gets ported uh, at the same rate and frequency of the original Donkey Kong, but it obviously enjoys like less of a uh, sterling rep- reputation, right? Um, I love Donkey Kong Jr. Donkey Kong Jr. Game & Watch is one of my favorite Game & Watches. I love it. I think it's a very good game. Um, it's better than the uh, the Donkey Kong Game & Watch. Um, but uh, yeah, I what, what what's your experience with Donkey Kong Jr.? I feel, so Donkey Kong Jr. kind of like turns the tables mm-hmm. on... Donkey Kong. In this case, Mario has captured Donkey Kong, and you're playing as Donkey Kong's son to um <laughs> yes. to rescue Donkey Kong. And so instead of being, you know, the I I think some of the stuff that I bump up against in the original Donkey Kong is the jump 
controls. Yeah. Because by the time that I was really playing Donkey Kong, I was very familiar with Super Mario Brothers, where you have, yes. you know, the like cartoon physics of being able to make a jump and then go back a little bit or, you yeah. know, like you yeah. can move in the air. Whereas my f- memory, and tell me if I'm wrong, of like Donkey Kong is it's the much more like analog, like you jump. Oh, yeah. You, you know, you've, like, you've committed to it ahead of time. Uh, either you are jumping forward or you are jumping straight up and there's no like there's no changing it once you commit to doing the jump but donkey kong jr is not really about jumping platforming it's a little bit about about it but it's more about climbing it's more about climbing and like going from vine to vine and maneuvering your way through it and so i've always liked i haven't played a ton of donkey kong jr but i've always liked donkey kong jr more than the original Donkey Kong. Yeah, I I, I like Donkey Kong Jr. A, a lot. I, I I think it's a really cool, um, good game. I would say the the biggest like disappointment of Donkey Kong Jr. is that the the fourth level, the final level, where you're just like climbing and putting like those the keys up in uh to to uh, un- unlock Donkey Kong's cage. That that level is not fun. Like the other the three levels leading up to it, fun levels. Um, but that last one is just kind of not 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 fun. <laughs> You know, one game that is not on this list is Donkey Kong 3. And I feel it because, yes. you know, it doesn't feature Mario. And I think that's one of just like a really good early example of the problems Nintendo ran into yeah, with, with the Donkey yeah. Kong series of just being like, well, what what more do we do here? What else can we do? Right. Well, and, uh, you know, well, they, they were hitting it pretty hard here in, in these first couple of years. Um, and, you know, all, all of these are also kind of just like um, uh, because they couldn't use Popeye anymore. Right. Like um, uh, the like, sort of original design for, for Donkey Kong was like Popeye and Bluto. Um, and, you know, that's uh, the original Popeye arcade uh, game made by Nintendo was made by Miyamoto. So like, um, you know the it's 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 all um they they were already like backed into a corner when they made the first Donkey Kong and then it's so wildly successful that they're like we got to just like keep riffing on this somehow um and i i do think that junior is a successful riff in a way that 3 isn't yeah and then after 3 they were like well, i guess this is it maybe we put this away for a while uh-huh. um uh, and uh, we we don't see Donkey Kong again until the Game Boy version in 1994, uh, a game sort of colloquially now known as Donkey Kong 94. Um, and just think about how much has changed in the 12 years since the last Donkey Kong game was released. 12 years, Mark. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Um, Donkey Kong 94, uh, re- released on the Game Boy, uh, has Super Game Boy uh, like compatibility. Um, do you ever mess around with the Super Game Boy? A, l- a little bit, yeah. Um, we had it because it's the Super mm-hmm. Nintendo. It's like you would plug it into the cartridge slot on the Super Nintendo, but it had a cartridge slot in it. Yes, and so you would put a Game Boy cartridge with inside it, and so you could play Game Boy games on your Super Nintendo. But it would, you know, um, kind of like do light colorization and have borders and things like that right and the games that were enhanced for it could use more than just the four prescribed colors um which so it, it's almost like a, a proto game boy color game even though it is not a game boy color game um and uh, donkey kong 94 starts off with the uh first four levels of the original donkey kong and then explodes into a sort of like puzzle platformer from there um and I don't have a ton, ton of experience with Donkey Kong 94, um, but Mark, I understand that you, uh, you do. Yeah, Donkey Kong 94 is really fun, and it's always been kind of silly to me that it's just named Donkey Kong. Yes. In, in the way that, yeah, it starts as a Donkey Kong game, you know, like the original arcade game. But yeah, then it expands way beyond that, and it is very... I wondered why they didn't make uh, a remake of this instead of Mario versus Donkey Kong. It's but, the game with the more sterling reputation, for sure. And they're very similar. Like, um, yeah. the, the concept of... It, it's very clear that Donkey Kong... Kong set. Yeah. It's very clear that Donkey Kong 94, the, yeah. a lot of the ideas from that became Mario versus Donkey Kong, that first uh, Game Boy Advance game. But also, like... It feels like they're they were messing around with Mario's movements 
maybe in anticipation of an ex- like what you could do in 3D space for the in the development of Mario 64. Yes. Because, you know, uh Mario can do more than just jump now. He can kind of like flip around and yeah. grab onto the You know what I mean? Like well, it's and, very... and even even his jump is has more in like the actual arc of the jump itself has more in common with Super Mario Brothers. And like that's the important thing to note is that between the release of Donkey Kong Jr. and Donkey Kong 94, like the entirety of like classic 8 and 16 bit Mario games have come out, right? Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 3, Super Mario World. All of those Donkey Kong as a franchise has been stagnant this whole time, but Mario, Mario has been changing and developing and like the joy of controlling Mario of making him run and jump is well established at this point and it is present in Donkey Kong 94. Yeah. Um 94 also the year that Donkey Kong Country comes out. Um, which like changes the sort of like trajectory and look of Donkey Kong as a franchise and just as like a concept within the Nintendo stable. Yeah, I feel like Donkey Kong up to before Donkey Kong Country, yeah, Donkey Kong was like an antagonist, mm-hmm. right? He was um a foil to Mario, but then with Donkey Kong Country, he became his own, like, I feel like my perception of donkey kong now is that he's kind of a chill yeah you know um laid back he's a himbo he just just wants to have a hoard of bananas but man just wants to hoard bananas but if those bananas get stolen (laughs) Mm -hmm. he's gonna go out and he's gonna get the bananas but in like an adventure kind of way Uh not like a scary gorilla kind of way exactly but uh but we just weren't there yet we just weren't there yet in in 1994 uh before country comes out um yeah, it's a uh, it, it's a uh, it's just interesting to think about like that. Oh, the uh, um the thing that I was going to say is like even in Mario Kart, Super Mario Kart on the uh, Super NES, um Donkey Kong's not a playable character in there. It's Donkey Kong Jr. Yeah. So like even in that they were like, "No, no, no, he's maybe too scary to be like in this group of, with uh, Mario characters. Uh let's put the junior version in here. Less scary that way." I also well, I also wonder for that one if it was like easier to identify as donkey like as donkey kong jr because he's wearing the like t-shirt yeah it's like a bib right my my read is always that he's wearing a bib Uh, uh you know because he's a baby (laughs) right (laughs) yeah i mean i would buy it (laughs) uh so that's donkey kong 94 um by all uh measures a, a great game yes absolutely but i think your point about donkey kong country is right in that it again split like again Mario's kind of the perfect video game character. Yeah. Because now you have Donkey Kong on two separate paths. You have the chill Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Country, yep. but you're still making these games that where Donkey Kong is like the antagonist. Um, so uh, it had been 12 years between Donkey Kong Jr. and uh, Donkey Kong 94 on the Game Boy. We wait then another 10 years, 2004, to finally get to Mario versus Donkey Kong on the Game Boy advance um and i feel like we we, you and i talk a lot about how um game boy advance in a lot of ways was just like the tool set that allowed the creators who were making games on game boy to like realize their vision um in uh color and in sharper graphics and better sound the same exact uh sort of transition as from nes to super nes uh and that is largely what the uh evolution from donkey kong to mario versus donkey kong is it took 10 10 10 years mark um but that's i mean that that's my read on mario versus donkey kong yeah and this is where like this next chunk of mario versus donkey kong games are ones that i am not familiar with at all yeah great um so uh and we will uh you know we'll, we'll have a whole episode about our uh, time playing the the remake of, of Mario versus Donkey Kong, so we needn't really dwell on it uh, too much here. Um, but this is where the series like goes, uh, or I guess it's uh, with uh, just Donkey Kong ninety four. It's like relegated to the handheld, and for the most part, that's where it stays, right? Um, and I don't know if that's just like part of. Well, I don't know. What would you have any like kind of read on like why the series is like pushed into just like handheld mode um i think it's because of the scope of these games yeah right like uh at this time you have 
the uh you're in the GameCube era and then you have the Wii and then the Wii U and but at the same those these games don't feel like they really fit. They're not really big enough, yeah. In that type of um platform. What I think is interesting is between 1994 and 2004, right? Will you have the Donkey Kong Country games? But then again, Donkey Kong goes fallow, right? Yes. There is no Donkey Kong game until Mario versus Donkey Kong brings them back in 2004. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, unless you want to count uh, Donkey Kong 64, right? Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Donkey Kong 64 comes out in 1997, I think. No, 1999. Um, so, like, it's in there in the middle, but, like, um, and, and maybe some of this is also just that, like, the rarification of the Donkey Kong franchise, that Nintendo is always just kind of like, they got it over there, they're doing their own thing, it's not what we do. Um, and so, like, thus the, like, split path for Donkey Kong continues. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, then, just a couple years later, 2006, we get Mario vs. Donkey Kong 2, March of the Minis, on the Nintendo DS. Mark, we've been talking so much about that Nintendo DS lately. Um, And this is where the series takes a sort of like uh, a turn that is uh, like a fairly dramatic one that it never totally comes back from, um, where instead of controlling Mario on the screen, you are controlling the Minis. Um, And the Minis are like little wind-up Marios. Uh, and there are multiples of them on screen, uh, and like you tap them to make them start walking. You can, at least in some of these earlier games, you can like swipe up to make them jump, um, uh, and then otherwise you're just sort of like manipulating the environment around them to guide them to uh, an exit point. So in a lot of ways, these become more like um, Lemmings style games and less like a puzzle platformer. Um, uh, and this is sort of like what they like. I was about to say slouch into, and I guess it's a. Uh, I, I suppose I mean it, but like th- this is what the series becomes from here on out. Which is, uh, it's interesting to me that after the second, it's like the second entry in it. Yes. Al- almost like uh, the Super Mario Land franchise, where you know they the second one. They introduced this new mechanic. They introduced Wario, which right. is the idea that was introduced in Super Mario Land 2. And then after that... It just takes over. It just takes over. And uh, all the, there's just, there is no more uh, Mario Land. Now it's all Wario Land. Um, yeah, I, and that, that, that's totally right. But the, the, the thing about the uh, uh, Mario vs. Donkey Kong 2 March of the Minis on DS is that it is like sort of a quintessential DS game in that they're like, no, you don't use buttons and like a D-pad in this. It's all based on, you know, your swipe motions uh, and tapping with the stylus, like making it a DS game um, and therefore like pretty accessible and kind of like anyone can play it. Um, should we move on to the next one? Sure. Uh, so this is a, a, a DSi game came out uh, three years later in 2009. Mario vs. Donkey Kong Minis March Again, um, which is kind of like a remake re like issuing of uh the the previous game Mario vs Donkey Kong 2 March of the Minis except you have even less control over the minis themselves um that you're no longer like swiping up to make them jump they just sort of like jump when they need to um so it's an, an even like sanding down of like the more challenging edges uh, or like the more like physically demanding edges of the game so that it's more purely a sort of like puzzle experience. Again, I think just sort of like fitting into the uh, lineup of DS games. Uh, from there, we move to uh, Mario vs. Donkey Kong. Miniland Mayhem, uh, another DS game, comes out in uh, 2010. Um, I don't know uh, too much about uh, Mini Miniland Mayhem. I know it's like theme park themed, um, but uh, yeah, is otherwise just like another one of these games where you're controlling the minis. Looking at this list, what's really notable to me is when a lot of Nintendo franchises will take long breaks between entries. They were like churning out They're these really Mario versus Don- out. Donkey yeah. Kong games every couple of years. 
uh, the that first minis game must have been like super successful, right? Like, why else would they be putting out uh, essentially the same game, sort of like over and over again? Um, but uh, next up, we have the uh, so the the first to not ha- be a Mario versus Donkey Kong, Mario and Donkey Kong minis on the move, a 3DS game uh, which comes out at May 9th. 2013 is a 3DS eShop exclusive, which means, of course, Mark, you can't get it anymore. <laughs> um, but uh, th- this is a weird one because it breaks the the formula from being like a uh, 2D like side you know view sort of thing um, to being you know those like a uh, what am I thinking of the uh, the game uh, where there's like mini games that are hacking where you have to like lay down the the tiles that to like complete a circuit or like you're rotating like bits of pipes or like wires or something like in Bioshock, like in Bioshock. Yes. Um, that's basically what this is like is that you're laying out a like direct path for the minis to, to walk on. This is a, 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 a departure for the series and they don't really uh, get back to it. Um, uh, and because it can no longer be downloaded, I've never played this game. Well, the next one seems like a departure as well. Like, we're back to Mario versus Donkey Kong. Yes. Called Tipping Stars for the 3DS on, um, in 2015. But this is, it seems like one of the big features here is a level editor. Yeah. So the uh, Mario versus Donkey Kong Tipping Stars, its whole thing was uh, you could edit levels, uh, you could make levels, and then share them. Uh, and you earned stars as you played through uh, the, the game's campaign, which is pretty good. Um, and then you could also earn stars by um, making levels and having people play them. So when you played a level, you finished it, you would tip them a certain number of stars. So like, you really like the level, you tip them three stars. If you didn't really like the level, you tip them one star. I think you had to tip something. I, I don't remember. Maybe you didn't have to. Um, but so like, it, it was a way for... Uh, um, maybe as you liked... I, I forget exactly how the economy of it worked, but it was actually pretty good at like incentivizing you to um like reward good or fun levels that would then uh like put them up in the rotation for people who are like looking for them um like they almost solved the uh user generated content discoverability problem before because this is before uh mario maker comes out mario maker comes out uh uh just a couple months later i think think yeah six six months later um in september of 2015 um and this came out in in march that's interesting i feel like they had around that time like um this idea of making levels and sharing it with your friends on the brain because you have this instance Mm -hmm. of it you have a mario maker comes down that not that soon on the wii u wasn't there like a a wario where type game yeah, where you're DIY. making your own yeah. mm-hmm. um like micro games like it seemed like that was an idea that they were buzzing about yeah i mean and i really like it, it fits in the same sort of conversation as like um uh oh, why can't i think of the nintendo uh social uh thing oh uh oh the like the app they had well, no, not even the app, but just like the the social network that oh, was on Wii U. On Wii U, yeah. Why can't I think of what that's called now? Nintendo something. <laughs> this is a good thing for us to blank on because it's really uh, obvious. <laughs> but we don't. Meverse. Re- Meverse. My God, yes. <laughs> Um, but like it, it's all kind of part of that, right? Where they're like, no, 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 people, the people playing games will like uh, support each other and enrich each other's experience, right? By doing stuff on Meverse. This is you know about the time that um, Splatoon hits as well. Um, like I think they just have the sort of like interconnectivity of their players in mind, even on 3DS, right? Like this is also around the time of like Triforce Heroes and. Uh, just a bunch of other uh, 3DS games that are like cooperative or like based in online stuff. Um, that's really what Tipping Stars is leaning into. Um, so like really clearly getting a picture of like what Nintendo's priorities were at that time. Um, even if Tipping Stars ends up ends up not being that big of a hit. Uh, and then uh, after that, still on uh, 3DS, but this time also on Wii U. Um, 
a game called Mini Mario and Friends Amiibo Challenge. Does this count as a Mario versus Donkey Kong game? I'm going to say yes. Yes. Okay. I will, uh, before we get into Mini Mario and Friends, interesting oh, yes. that Tipping Stars, uh, so this was basically 10 years after Mario versus Donkey Kong started in, on the GBA in 2004. Yes. Nintendo kind of calls it quits. No more Mario versus Donkey Kong games until this remake yeah, another that's, like that's almost true. 10 years later. Uh yeah, I like specifically getting rid of the branding of Mario versus Donkey Kong. Yeah, it it's uh it, it is interesting and weird that they would hit it so hard for so long and then they're just like, "Nah, no more games named that." I mean, it really did feel like it it just felt like played out. Yeah. Yeah, I I I agree with that. Um but back to Mini Mario and Friends Amiibo Challenge. This is a free-to-play game um that you had to, first of all, it introduces a bunch of new minis that you like play as or control. So it's no longer just like a Mario, a mini Mario walking around. There's mini Peach, there's mini uh, Yoshi, mini Wario, like all these different little guys um, with all with different uh, uh, abilities. But you can only play as those characters by scanning in the amiibo. They are leaning hard into amiibo functionality. Um, and Amiibo had been out for uh, like about a year and a half at this point. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's always just interesting for me to consider um, the whole like toys to life landscape um, and like what, how Amiibo fits into that. Um, because this is really an example of them trying to add value to those to the amiibo that were already out there right amiibo that they already had for like the mario series or for the smash series that you could then use to give you levels to play in this mini mario and friends amiibo challenge and so did any amiibo work any amiibo will work um but it's uh you know the vast majority of them would just give you this like i forget the guy's name but it's just like a little weird little like square guy um whose name we should look up because he should be on my next, like, he should be in Smash uh, roster. But, like, you, you wanted to scan in, like, a Toad or, uh, you know, like Mario characters um, and actually, like, get to play with those special characters and their special abilities and beat these levels that, like, you need the special abilities to beat. Yeah, I see. I see. Um, so while it was a free-to-play game and available on uh, both of the Nintendo platforms at the time, you truly needed to have um amiibo in order to do it mini spec mini spec that's his name he's yes. like a, a little uh black cube yeah um with uh like little like robot arms and little robot legs and yeah. uh two yellow round eyes yeah so he's almost like a square bomb uh, yeah 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 with yep. hands yep right um yeah uh so that's uh that's this weird game, and I feel like, you know, the sort of shine had come off the Mario versus Donkey Kong series, especially with, like, the uh, the introduction of, of, of the minis, um, but, like, this is really one, I think, that landed with a thud and that, like, nobody cared about. What was the Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival? Amiibo Festival, yeah. I feel, man, I feel like they were... Any game with Amiibo in the title, <laughs> just, like sank yeah I, and i and they all felt kind of like acts of desperation mm -hmm. where it's like well the wii u is not doing that well it doesn't have a lot of software what can we get out fairly quickly yes that a value adds to amiibo i still think that there is a version of animal crossing amiibo festival that could be fun just like an animal crossing party uh that like would be would be neat I don't. I don't know why. Why they didn't make like a good version of that game, but it's 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 like playing Candyland. Mm, you know, mm -hmm. um, you uh, touch touch the amiibo to the uh, near field reader to roll the dice, and that's like literally all you do. You don't get Ugh. to make any choices. Like it's it's a real bummer. Um. So anyway, uh, Mini Mario and Friends uh, Amiibo Challenge. I imagine that the uh, on Wii U and 3DS that these will no longer be playable after like April 8th or whatever it mm -hmm. is. Um, uh, and if you haven't already downloaded it, you, <laughs> you probably can't. I think I still have this on my Wii U. Um, but who, who remembers? Um, so that brings us, of course, to the Mario vs. Donkey Kong game coming out in just a couple weeks here. 
Uh, and obviously we haven't played it yet, uh, so we don't really know what its deal is. But uh, as far as what it indicates about where Nintendo is right now, um, it feels totally in line with everything else they're doing, right? Yep. Feels like end of life for the Switch. We still need software for the Switch, but the majority of our teams have turned their attention to whatever is coming next. And so, yep. you know, we're making some high quality remakes, pulling in some games that, um, you know, haven't been on the radar for the past 20 years or so, and just kind of reaping the benefits of that. The high quality remake of a game that hasn't been available for like 15 to 20 years is so interesting to me. And they've done it a lot this generation. Yeah, they have. Um, like, uh, and I guess if we increase it to 30 years, we can include Famicom Detective Club in there. But like, Another Code, um, Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp, this uh, thing, we're going to get Luigi's Mansion 2. Like, it's a, it's a, an interesting tactic. Yeah, like a little, like, you know, 10 years further back. So another, you know, you have Super Mario RPG. Yes, we're getting thank thou- you. We're getting Thousand Year Door. Uh-huh. Like, yeah, it just feels like that is what the next year of Switch is going to be. Right. Uh, and I, I don't know about you, but like, that's very, that's exciting to me. Like, um, and is the kind of thing that I uh, like would fantasize about where it's like, oh, those games are good. They're just old. Uh-huh. Um, and like, I sort of can't believe that Nintendo is like, oh, those games don't need to be old anymore. Here you go. It's <laughs> new now. Uh, it just seems very cool to me. Um, which, so, okay. Now, now we're up to the present day and we've done like just sort of a, a general survey uh, over uh, the entire Mario vs. Donkey Kong series. Obviously, both you and I fall off of, like, paying attention to this series, um, like, kind of in the middle, even during the period where um, you and I were saying that, like, the DS brought us back into games or, like, made us excited about it. Um, uh, and, like, I played uh, Mario vs. Donkey Kong 2, um, March of the Minis, but then was sort of out for a while until Tipping Stars came out. Yep. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just, uh, it's, uh, I- interesting to think that like as they were really pumping them out i was really not accepting them uh, yeah uh, same same for you absolutely yeah. um so but like with that in mind uh how does that color like what you're going to be going into the new mario versus donkey kong with like what is your attitude about it going in you know i i am looking forward to it because i feel like it's um you know when you you have a band that you like and they release an album. And at the time you're like, I don't know. I don't really get it. This isn't for me. Yeah. But then you return to it sometime later in your life and it connects with you in a way that it didn't before. Or you find things you appreciate in it. Yes. And that's kind of what, that's what I'm hoping for and kind of what I'm expecting for uh, the Mario versus Donkey Kong remake. Because the fact that Nintendo made so many of these games in yeah. such a short amount of time which they very, very rarely do for any franchise, makes me feel like there must be something here. Yeah. Well, and, like, the sort of, like, bite-sized level experience, um, like, small puzzle platforming thing, uh, all of that feels so neatly inside Nintendo's wheelhouse that I'm like, yeah, let's get a let's get an opportunity. Let's get an excuse to experience those all over again. Yeah, it feels like all these, like, discrete things that i really like mario running and jumping and yes like platforming plus puzzle solving and like all of these different pieces organized in a way that uh we rarely you know like this sort of game is it's not like what am i trying to say it's not like nintendo has made a ton of these types of games sure right because even the mario versus donkey kong series changed really quickly right from to, something to like become this the, the lemmings-esque yeah yeah well, and i also think it's interesting that there's so much like you can play the whole uh remake in co-op right in ca- couch co-op not something that you could do in the original version of the game or any mario versus donkey kong game they've all been single player experiences with the sort of caveat about tipping stars that we were talking about earlier um but like what a switch style thing to be like no no two of you can play this together on a couch and like solve these puzzles together like uh that's that's some snipper clip stuff right there uh-huh. right yeah uh, and i i think that that level of fun like i think i'm gonna be able to get sarah to play this with me because we'll be like solving puzzles together um 
which uh, f- is just such a Switch sort of concept um, that I, I love that even as they're putting out a Game Boy Advance game from 20 years ago, they're like, yeah, but it's got a little twist that is the thing that only the Nintendo Switch is capable of as far as handhelds are concerned. Yep. Um, all right. Uh, th- that's it. We talked about the, uh, the Mario vs. Donkey Kong series. Mark, let's close this episode out. Uh, I would, of course, be interested to hear what our listeners' uh, experience with the series uh, is and, you know, where people are uh, in their level of hype and expectation for this new one. So get in the Discord, email us, Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com, gmail.com. Uh, so we can let you in there and uh, you can let us know how you feel about the series. Uh, that's going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Thank you so much to our 16-bit patrons, Connor McKay, Patrice Millette, David Henley, uh, 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 Alias X, and Kyle Seaborn. Uh, join the Discord. Anthony DeLuca made our logo. Our theme music is provided by Ape Betty. You can get more of his music by going to apeatbetty.com or by listening right now. For my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Ellers saying thank you. For listening. Oh, and uh, oh, banana. <laughs> <laughs>